Let's paint it. The project from this episode will be available for free members over on the CG Cookies site, so make sure you head over there and grab it. As well, in this episode, I use a couple textures from CC0 Textures. Links are going to be down below. Let's swap on over to our shading workspace and get started on our little cactus. I'm going to use a geometry node because I want to access the pointiness option. This is only going to work in cycles mode though, so make sure you switch over. Using a color ramp node, in our rendered view, we can see that I can bring these values closer together and isolate a lot of the edges of the mesh or the curvature. With that, I can use this as a mask between two RGB nodes, using it as the factor for our mix RGB. Just change these to any colors you want and you're all set up there. Next up on our list, let's take a look at the pot. This one is pretty simple, however, I want to introduce a slight color gradient to give it a little bit more stylization. Let's start with the texture coordinate node again, but I want to use the object socket this time. By running it through a separate RGB node and using the blue channel, we can isolate a direction and then use a color ramp node again to control the gradient however we'd like. Once again, we're going to be able to use this as a mask for our mix RGB to give the top of the pot a bit of a sun-kissed look. For the dirt, a pretty quick solution worked best. I used a simple noise texture which I plugged into a bump node to add some surfacing and then plugged the noise itself into the roughness to add variation. You aren't going to see this material really anyways, so I tried to keep it fairly light. The scale on the noise also allows you to get different looks if you want. Same thing for the helmet as I made it a darker olive color and nothing more. Now for the spikes I actually wanted to set up a metal material that I can use across my entire car. For this I decided to use my first metal texture that I snagged, plugging it into the base color, metallic, roughness, and normal inputs. For all the images except the base color, make sure that you're setting them to be non-color images. Otherwise, you're going to get some pretty goofy results. Once this material has been set up, I took a trip across my entire vehicle finding the pieces that would need this type of material. I made sure to select them all, finally making the spikes my active selection and linking the material by hitting Ctrl L and selecting materials. That should give all those selected pieces the metal material. Let's take a look at our windows now and give them something a little unique. Using another texture from CC0 Textures, I set up all of the same inputs using a different texture. However, I want to use the UV coordinates of these meshes, so I need to go ahead and unwrap them first. Fortunately, my basic unwraps were enough to do the job for me, and then I was simply able to rotate the texture within the shader editor on the z-axis about 86 degrees. Repeating that process for the rear and side windows, I was able to give it a pretty cool look. Now I also want to use this texture as some grills for the front of the vehicle. Because we have so many polygons, it's going to be pretty tough to select the right faces to unwrap. But a little trick that I found out is that you can actually select a totally enclosed edge loop, then go to select, select loop, and loop inner edge, and it's going to select everything within that edge loop. Not really sure how I never knew about that one, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to live it down now in the comments, am I? For our tires, I want to do something a little complex, but I think it's worth it. Using the generated socket of the texture coordinates node, I'll add on a mapping node, a separate RGB node, and a color ramp. For the color ramp, I want to change the interpolation mode to constant, so that when one value meets another, we get this harsh line. Let's add another white value and place it on the left side. Now these two white values are going to be on either sides of the tires, which we can use to mask off some cool color accents. I'll use a dark gray for the tire color, and then feel free to choose whatever color you want for the extra markings. Finally, I'm going to use a wave texture to add some surfacing to the tires. Make sure the axis is aligned to whichever direction you want the tread to run on the tires. I'm also going to use a mix RGB to subtract the mask we just made because I do not want my tread running all the way up to the edges of the tire. After that's subtracted away, we can run it through a bump node to make the information readable to the shader. I give it a pretty low value, probably around 0.2. 
Now it's time for the main body. I've already given it a mix between two colors and I want to give a cool crossover like you see with the Formula 1 cars. Again, to set that up, let's first use a texture coordinate node. I'm going to want to use the object socket as we know this one can give us various directions that we can manipulate. However, let's add a vector displacement node because I want to add a little variation to the object vector. Make sure to keep the vector in object space and then let's use a checkered texture and plug that into the scale socket. Now we can separate RGB and use a color ramp to crush the values in together using constant interpolation. With a mapping node, we can rotate this on any axis we want, which will give us a cool design. But we can also change the color values of the checker texture itself, which will change the offset of the pattern and a solid color, giving us a cool two-tiered look. Changing the scale of the pattern is also incredibly easy. Now, you don't have to stick with a checker pattern either. By using any of the procedural grayscale textures in Blender, we can create some pretty cool results that will be affected by the vector displacement and vector mapping nodes independently of the properties that those texture nodes offer as well. However, it wouldn't be Formula One without sponsorship, right? Let's bring in an image texture and set up another mapping node in case we want to do some moving around that way. However, I opted to unwrap the area of our vehicle and simply move the vertices around in the UV editor instead, which made it a little bit easier. Don't forget to use a mix RGB to blend it all together as well. Finally, if you notice your image having a little weird outline on it, on the image node, just change the interpolation type to closest and that should eliminate the artifact. I'm also quickly going to create a mirror material and I'm going to do this by simply making the roughness incredibly low and assigning only certain vertices to this material. The last materials we need to create are going to be for the front and rear lights. I started with the front using a very simple shader with some emission color and an emission value of around eight. This will give it a nice glow. I then use the same technique, selecting an edge loop and then selecting the inner loops. And I've got to say that that really cuts down a lot of the work and any potential issues. Repeating that process for the rear lights, I decided to give them a red glow instead since I think that's a more commonly associated color with them. And now if you've been following along pretty diligently in the last five videos, you should get something like this. Well, that is gonna be our time together for this season. I'll be honest, this didn't turn out to be quite the abomination that I thought it could be knowing you delinquents. So uh, good job team. I wanna thank everybody who continued to vote on each new episode. I know it's a little cliche, but truthfully, this show could not work without your continued input. So thank you so much. I'd really love to hear what you guys thought about this season. Some things that worked well, some things we could improve upon. And let me know as well in the comments some things that you maybe would want to tackle in future seasons. As always, I've been Chunk. This has been Let's... <laughs> what is this show? As always, I've been Chunk. This has been Let's Build It in Blender, Season 2. Later, skater. Oh. <laughs> Whatever that effect is. <laughs> so why do chicken coops have two doors? Well, because if they had four, they'd be chicken sedans. <laughs> that one hits me on a new level. I don't know why. My sister argued with me that you can't make a car out of spaghetti, but you should have seen her face when I drove past her. I don't have the accent for that joke, but... <laughs>